Photographers are like baby dolphins. They can swim faster than you, most likely. They have gray skin. They could save you from sharks, but they often choose not to. It's not that I won't help them if five of them come to ask me for help, because I will. You know that. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. All right, a couple of side notes before we get into the show. Pink eye is healed. Thank the heavens. And fortunately, my eyelid is swollen to three times its size. It's barely noticeable. So I will save you from that. I healed the pink eye though. You have to give me that. And the reason there's no mic in the shot, because I woke up one day and my good old buddy Audient ID14 is dead. No idea what happened. I don't know if the power went out or a window setting changed, but this thing is bricked and it does nothing now. And so like, I'm looking to upgrade the thing. So I do upgrade it. I look for the best preamps in the biz. We got the M Audio Air 192 slash six. I'm like, yep, fantastic knob, easy to operate. Hissy headphone preamp, something's going on there. It's like hiss and it won't recognize the microphones. That's going back, thanks for nothing. So I can't use my speakers, I can't use my microphone. I'm listening to everything through my headphone jack of the front bus. Life sucks. Was that your question? It probably was. Bro, the 200 mil is 3000 new. He's talking about Leica, of course. The 50 to 200 is 1500 too. Also a Leica, but not as much tonnage. Would you say the Leica was twice the price good? Seriously love the channel, Greg Hunt, shut up. Okay, here we go. Is it twice the price good? I often find with like a 1.4 prime versus the two, it's like two or three times the cost. Is it really worth it? It almost always is. It really is. I just, all I remember, cause I didn't use the 50 to 200 too much because the 200 was so good. That 200 mil prime is magic. It's the best lens out of any focal length ever made. Like the ton is so smooth and beautiful and it's sharp and contrasty. There's 3D pop, beautiful. The 50 to 200 was close. It was almost there, but you lose a full stop at 200, slightly less contrasty now. Was there 3D pop? I doubt it. It just makes it feel like I'm using not as good as full frame now, with my 50 zoom. The 200 is like, this is better than full frame sometimes, depending on the camera. It is worth it, even though I'm trying to sell it and not one person will buy it. You know what I don't understand? That lens is 4,000 plus tax new in Canada. It's like $4,500 with the teleconverter. I'm selling it for like 2250. I never even get messages about it. It's the best lens ever made, you donkeys. What are you doing? You could have the cinema in your heart. Nobody wants to invest that kind of money. It's still high in micro four thirds. It's a loser company system. You're a loser. But in my opinion, it's absolutely worth it. Unless you're traveling a lot because that 50 to 200 is noticeably lighter and it's almost as good depends who you're sharing it with. Like after YouTube compression, you probably barely see the difference. You still see it. Spring for the Leica 200 Prime. I'm wearing no shorts. Can you see them in my sunglasses? Oh, I should have prepared. How many and how big are your hard drives? What solution do you use for data backup? What are your tips and tricks for being able to fire first, find videos easily, say with the different camera lenses, your self-talk every event. Okay, here's my system. I have a computer. In it is a one terabyte SSD that I do everything with. All my programs are on there, all my video files. Then I have a two terabyte backup in the computer to where I just like put the finished rendered videos in for the year. So that's one folder at the end of the year. I then offload that onto two 16 terabyte USB drives, not SSD. There's nothing special. You probably shouldn't be listening to me, but this is cheap. 
It's easy, they're not fast. If ever I need to find a video and use it, I drag it off onto the desktop. It's a slow process, but I got two, that's 14.5 terabytes, really. I got gypped. That's a lie, they're not 16. Your mom's 16 when I met her. Yeah. And then how I organize the files. I've been doing this for so long, almost 10 years now, so it's getting kind of tough, but in the beginning it was by cameras. So like I first had the Canon SD1100IS and then I upgraded to the Sony WX50. It was a downgrade in every way, just green face. And then I got the Canon G7X and then we moved into the Panasonic G85 and X3000 era, boom. And then I moved to Thailand. So like I had this whole series in Thailand. Then I moved back to my mom's house for a little bit. So there's that series, and then I got my own place. You're witnessing it. A one bedroom, junior one bedroom. It's cuter than one bedrooms. And then that was that, and now I'm just doing year by year. 2020, 2022. It's like, that's harder to remember because I remember every video I made in my mom's living room with the Panasonic GH5S and we got the purple walls and it was like, wow, this really sucks. So now things are kind of running together. It's kind of hard to remember like, what was that video? Sometimes I'm thinking like, oh man, I tested that lens. What, oh man. Cause I never label things properly, but usually I get it. I find it eventually. Sometimes videos disappear in my system for some reason. I've looked for videos. I'm like, where's that video? It's gone. It is gone from the ether. So I don't know, man, that's what I do. I don't have like a, what do they even call that? I forget the name. It's like stacks, you know it. Don't say it down below. I'll remember by the time you said it. Don't waste my life. Hey Casey, have you ever tried dropping mid detail in post? I'm wondering how that would compare to using the mist filter. Soften Sony's counter sharpening might be an option for those who without the filter. Of course I do that. Like, what do you think this is? You think, oh, people, I got a comment the other day saying like, oh my God, have you heard ZVE-1 has 4K 120p now? It's like, of course I heard. I check camera sites every 15 seconds. So of course I've experimented with lowering mid sharpening. If you do it too much, it's like a hazy look. I don't mind that even, but yeah, usually like minus 15 or so, just a touch. It's nice, and then sometimes I increase it to max for the 8K in here, and it's a fun look. I increase mid sharpening and the regular sharpening all the way to max, and that's how we achieve this. So I do, I balance it both, but I am starting to embrace color grading more. The reality is God wants you to learn and be knowledgeable and know things, and only a moron would use a camera and think, oh no, the color is bad. I'll go home defeated. Like you learn how to tweak these things. So once I bought this chart, I could not believe the differences in a Sony look. Like, look at this image. It's okay, this shirt is not helping, but it's linen and I'm healing just by wearing it. So you're witnessing what I've tweaked using this versus what I used to do and it's like so red and orange and weird. And it's like, ah, it's still not perfect with my tweaks, but it's better. And so like, there's a fine line between like just correcting the footage to have it look decent versus getting obsessed with it and going all into color science. You're downloading LUTs and you're just like, oh my God, the magenta shadows. Yes, I finally perfected it. So it's smart to develop some color grading techniques and skills so you can get the look you want in any camera or you just go for like a Canon camera and it's pretty much better than what you're going to tweak anyway right out the box. So it's like the answer is buy a Canon C70 and give me one. Buy two. Send one here. Are you sending one? You're not. I need a bigger monitor, man. I can't see. I'm like 15 feet away from it. I'm trying to zoom in. Every time I read a question, I'm like, eh. I feel like I'm 97 years old. Have you noticed that in every review, that video, I, even when I'm here, I can't read anything. It's my mind that is the problem. The XS20 people have very pink skin. Is it the best color science from Fuji? 
They claim T9 film simulations. But what about true to life color profile? I really like the camera specs, but I don't want myself looking like Miss Piggy. Are you a man? Oh man. Okay, here's the deal. The Fuji purple is real. I noticed it first when I did a Canon versus Fuji video outside. And I was like, why am I so purple? What is this? And I was like, wow, Canon looks so much better. Even though I kept getting comments saying Canon looks green. I prefer green, I guess, because it looked way better than the Fuji. I was like, damn, those Canon colors. Well, Fuji's bullshit. What have I been doing? And then I look back at my older footage and I'm like, yeah, it's often purple. It's like a magenta shift. It's the white balance, I think, that is the problem. But I don't know, sometimes Fuji, you just love the colors. Like, damn, that's a vintage film look right out of camera. Nostalgic Neg, Eterna, wow, beautiful. And then you see it in other YouTubers. It's like, why are you purple? You're purple. Leave me alone, Barney, you freaking dinosaur here to brainwash kids, leave me alone. But it's probably an easy tweak. If you just learn something, you bring the color chart with you, it's like, okay, I can see those hues. Magenta's a little oversaturated and you bring things down in a chart and then that is your LUT, you save that. So like this, I didn't do anything to grade it. I did it once a long time ago and then boom, put the LUT on and then it's graded. And then maybe a minor tweak in the exposure, shadows, stuff like that, you're done with the grading. You don't have to, even outside this works. When I did that video down by the beach, it was this same LUT, like nothing changed. So you grade once, you go home, but it really brings up like new conundrums. It's like, okay, you like the look of the Fuji. Well, what if you could get that look with a Sony with better autofocus and better technology in full frame? Is the Fuji look really important only to morons who don't know how to change the look? So it's like, just learn how to color grade. That should be your course. Spend like 400 bucks on a course to learn how to color grade. And then it's like, the world is your oyster. Any camera is suitable. What would you do if you had the perfect camera? I don't know. I never, never really thought about it. I, what, what, you think I, I couldn't put a good, perfect camera to good use? I could. I could devise ways to use it. I have ideas floating around here. I need a perfect camera. Totally need it. For this type of thing and other things that I do often. I, I'm the first candidate that needs this high technology that doesn't exist yet. It's not like a stupid quest I'm on that has no purpose. I need the perfect camera. Look, that light's clipping. Is, is this perfect? How do you expose for a face and not the light? Okay, bring down the light. Now look at my face. It's not perfect. I need airy level dynamic range with super slow-mo for like running across the street. It's a thing. It's a thing that I need. You need it. Who cares what your quest, the journey that we're all here for. It's the getting to the perfect camera, it's the quest. The little side missions. Oh, look at this treasure chest. Oh, wow, a light. A light bulb, I found a light. Lighting seems to matter, wow. It's not about the end, the end game. Just be yourself. That's who. How you doing? You good? Sony color science. I'm on a Zeiss. I took the Pro Mist filter off. I am displaying superior Sony technology. Now look at my eczema. I have a rash on my forehead. The mid-tone detail is lowered. Helps with that. It doesn't. You can still see it. I'm gonna leave. How you doing? Subscribing for more videos on the next